F1 can be a very confusing place if you're just getting started with it. Here, in the intro to F1 series, I'm gonna try to explain many common used F1 slang words, as they often turn new viewers off, as they miss out on commentary, strategic decisions, and more. I've had to learn all of this by myself, and would have greatly appreciated if someone had explained them to me. And that's why I'm making this video. Whether you're a newcomer or a returning viewer that hasn't watched F1 in a while, or maybe you're just starting to get serious with it, I'm hoping this video can clarify some of your questions on F1 slang. Q1, Q2, and Q3. Alright, so you may hear these terms thrown out in qualifying, but their meaning is not immediately noticed. They stand for the three phases of qualifying, Q1 being where the bottom five spots on the grid are decided by the drivers with the slowest lap times, leaving the top 15 to go through to the second session. In Q2, the five slowest drivers out of the remaining 15 are left behind, and Q3 is a shootout for the top 10, plus deciding pole position for the race. DRS DRS or drag reduction system is an artificial way of improving overtaking by physically moving the top part of the rear wing as to create a hole in it for air to go through. Introduced in 2011, DRS is a system that can be activated manually in the straights and went through multiple revisions. I'm going to explain how it works nowadays. After the third lap of the race, DRS is activated to the drivers really close to the car ahead for use on the straights. There's a catch though, they have to be within one second at the DRS detection point, a point on the track usually right before a long straight that grants the trailing driver disadvantage for use on the DRS activated straight right ahead. DNF, DNS, DNQ and DQ. These acronyms may sometimes be confused with one another, but if you remember what they stand for, it's pretty easy to tell them from each other. DNF is the most common term, meaning did not finish. This is a term used for drivers who do not finish the race, be it through retiring with a mechanical issue, an engine failure, a crash, being beached at the gravel trap, or others. DNS isn't something that's seen often in the current F1 world, but showed up twice this year for two unfortunate drivers. It stands for did not start, meaning the driver qualified for the race, but due to a mechanical issue or physical unwell, be it sickness or an injury, could not make the start. A recent example has been Carlos Sainz in the 2020 Belgian Grand Prix, where he had a turbo issue causing an exhaust blowout on his McLaren on the out lap. DNQ did not qualify have been non-existent in the modern era. With 20 drivers and therefore 20 cars, unless a car is dangerously slow, everyone will start the race. F1 hasn't always been like that though. In the late 80s and early 90s, car entries in F1 were given out like free samples at your nearest bakery. Up to 40 cars would want in on the action at some races, and with the maximum number of cars allowed being 26, something had to be done about it. That's where pre-qualifying came into the picture. Battling for a spot on the grid, only 4 drivers would move on to the proper quality, which usually took place moments after. Teams like Life, Andrea Moda, Coloni and others are prime examples of why the DNQ badge of honor is given. DQ stands for disqualified, this being the worst punishment that can be given to a driver or team. Like DNS, it's not something that we're used to seeing here in F1 nowadays, but the last time someone was disqualified was Renault in Japan last year, after being concluded that they used illegal driver aids during the race, therefore both cars were disqualified. A disqualification can be given through other means though, after repeated warnings and penalties for dangerous driving or for putting other drivers slash track marshals at risk. Free pit stop A free pit stop is said to be taken when the driver in question pits while a safety car or virtual safety car is out, slowing the whole pack down and effectively reducing the length of a pit stop while taking into account the pace of the cars lapping the track. It's not actually a free pit stop, but it's said to be that because it can greatly improve the amount of places lost. While a regular pit stop drops the pitting car around 30 seconds off the pack, a free pit stop can save up to 10 to 20 seconds on that delta. Undercut and overcut. Now, let's get a little bit to strategy. If you're watching someone saying undercut or overcut, you might see someone diving into the pits. That's because the two words are codenames for pit stop strategy, used by teams and drivers to get an advantage on their closest rivals. If a driver is caught not being able to overtake on dirty air, they might resort to undercutting, pitting that lap or the lap after to try and go faster than the car they were fighting. Therefore, once they pit, they would have lost effective track position. Overcuts work in an inverted way, extending the life of the tires as much as possible as to try and wait for a safety car or some other race altering incident to get a free pit stop. Blistering Mercedes' worst enemy, blistering is a term used for extreme or uneven wear of the tires, and can usually be attributed to the car having too much downforce or a track being too demanding. Blistering shows us little cavities on the surface of the tire, evolving into streaks, effectively reducing the contact patch between the wheel and the track, making the car more slippery and unpredictable. 
front runners, midfield, and back markers. These terms are usually used to describe the segments of the grid. The front runners are what are usually called the top teams, those who are fast enough to battle for the win and pole position. For the past few years, there have been three top teams, those being Mercedes, Red Bull, and Ferrari the usual podium contenders and those actually fighting for the championship until this season, where multiple issues drove Ferrari from championship contention to the bottom of the midfield. The midfield itself is a segment of cars with a noticeable performance deficit to the top teams, leaving a significant gap to the front over a number of laps. These teams provide the most interesting scrambles, fighting for points in a much tighter group. The team on top of the midfield usually varies significantly between races, depending on straight line speed, downforce and even wind. For the 2020 season, the top midfield runners are McLaren, Renault and Racing Point, with Ferrari and Alfa Tauri usually trailing close behind, ready to take advantage of any issues up ahead. The Buckmarker teams change every couple of years with diverse factors from financial issues to management reshuffles or just a bad engine or aero package. The teams here can all cross at least one of those definitions as things that happened to them during the past few years. The backmarker teams this season are Haas, Alfa Romeo and Williams, usually over 10 to 20 seconds behind the midfield by the end of the race. These are the drivers usually lapped in short circuits. Alright, I think we can leave it here for today. These are a few of the most important words used regularly in this sport that go unexplained. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments and I might even do a part 2 if there are enough requests. As always, like the video if you like it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future uploads.